Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Quizzical's Guide 2 with me Quizzical and today we're going to be looking at trying to put everything that you've learnt so far from the videos into one kind of linked concept that helps you try to put everything into the thought process of your moves. So let's get on with things. So opening plays. Opening plays are really important because they tend to dictate the flow of the game. So if your play is one that's got complex letters in it like V's that just block up the board or they're words that take a load of end hooks or provide a lot of floaters they're going to change how the game is played so the first example would make it a lot tighter the second example would make it a lot more open but there's certain aspects of your opening play you really need to think about such as bingo spotting so there's like a 1 in 7 chance of you having a bingo on your opening rack so always look for the bingos even this early in the game you need to consider rack balance if you're not considering rack balancing then your racks can go pear shaped pretty quickly and it can be hard to recover from that sometimes without having to change so it's always important to rack balance even if you do have to sacrifice score to do so on your opening play in particular benjamins are something you really need to think about so um, as I've explained in a previous video they are three letter extensions to five letter words or generally in an opening play scenario any extension to any word could be important and always make a note of any extensions or hooks that you see on your score sheet as this may help you remember stuff in the future so uh, mid game shenanigans what, what goes on in the middle of the game well, a lot can happen at this point in the game once you've gotten past the first few moves of stuff happening a staircase board can begin to develop and those can be really really difficult to deal with if you're not used to them so um, in lower divisions this is a lot more prevalent than in higher divisions but learning how to deal with a staircase board is something that you may have to do and you may have to sacrifice a lot to do so uh, at this point in the game tiles begin to get played the tile pool starts diminishing and in some cases you will end up with case letters so you may end up with a single s at the mid game scenario um, it's quite possible that that can happen there are a hundred tiles they can come out almost in an infinite order so who knows there could be a case s at that point but the mid game is also where you establish your lead or you start to fall behind your opponent and knowing what to do in those scenarios is really important so you need to know whether you need to keep the board open or you need to think about whether you need to start closing it down uh, because there are a lot of tiles or a lot more tiles on the board in the mid game scenario you've really got to consider things like board vision your ability to see the hot spots on the board that make it really important to score and get those points even without bonusing your rack balancing is still really really important as it is throughout the whole game and this is where your tile tracking starts to come in so this is where knowing the vowel to consonant ratio of the pool or whether there are any case letters or whether any letters start to become less frequent in the pool so you can hold on to them or and not get rid of them or whether there are important hooks still left in the pool those are things you really need to consider when it comes to the mid game something else that can happen mid game is fishing so when you're confronted with a rack that is really really close to a bonus six letters and six letters are really good one letter is really bad you kind of need to, you, you're gonna want to fish because bonuses get an extra 50 points right so why why are you not going to go for them well sometimes when you go for a bonus you sacrifice so much to get the bonus that you realize it wasn't exactly worth it to go for the bonus 
but it's important to remember that even some really unlikely racks make bonuses so fishing might not always be necessary you you may just have the bonus anyway without the need to fish but fishing only really works if there are already openings on the board and preferably at least two and if these openings aren't there on the board then there's no point fishing so for example in a lower division game where a staircase board is kind of developing there's not really much point in fishing because the chances of there actually being a place to play your bonus are really slim so it's always important to consider the shape of the board as well as what your rack looks like tile tracking is always important again for fishing so that you know which tiles in the pool enable you to, to draw your bonus now into the nitty gritty the end game nail biters this is the point in the game where all your hard work throughout the game is decided whether you win or you lose or maybe even you draw and stuff you really have to think about at the end of the game is things like your setup plays your your tile tracking really comes in handy at this point because you know exactly what tiles your opponent has it's not cheating it's just a method of smarts really I mean everybody does it it's you it's not cheating because you just cross off the letters as they get used and at that point you can then work out what's left and your opponent can then work out what you've got and that really comes in handy with things like tile sticks because if you know your opponent's got the cue and there's only one place for it you can block it but even better at this point in the game if you know exactly what your opponent has you can predict what they can do and by predicting what they could do you can then play out the whole end game in your mind and work out what is the best way to win and that's something that is probably a lot more complicated to think about and it will come as you learn more words and as you get used to tracking and as you get used to the whole end game scenario completely so other things that can come at different points in the game that are really important uh, challenging is always really important especially in an end game where there's n there's nothing really to lose in an end game but depending on the the type of challenge setting that you have whether it's single challenge or free challenge uh, double challenge in America maybe five point penalty either per word or per turn it's always important to consider what the scores are at that point and whether not challenging or challenging has any effect on anything but I would recommend always checking after the game for words you wanted to challenge but didn't because you will probably remember them better in the future so that you know whether they're allowed or not allowed and it's a better way of keeping them in your head something else that I probably want to bring up is recounting the game this is something not many players are able to do because they don't always record all the details themselves of the game to be able to do it but don't be afraid of trying to recount the game if you've lost by less than 20 points or a smaller number of points and you feel like maybe you misscored something it's always worth checking but try and be quick I hope you guys learned something I hope this helped I hope it summarized everything pretty quickly and I hope to see you for more of Quizzical's Guides to. Bye!